Second down, good throw to your side. Smith again has another first down inside the 25. And Greenlaw slams him down. That's going to be 15 more. And now tempers flare. It's when Greenlaw reached out toward Dom, who provides security and so much else, as we're telling you the Eagles. Over. Personal foul, number 57 of San Francisco, who has also been disqualified. Now, back to Willard and Dibbs on 95.7 The Game. <sighs> I <know him. laughs> How do the announcers know right away? They're like, oh, that's Dom. Who the hell is Dom? That's Dom Rinaldi uh, from Fox. What are you doing, Dom? What are you doing down there? My favorite there? part of that is Tom Rinaldi. That's Dom who provides security and so much else. It's when Greenlaw reached out toward Dom who provides security and so much else. <laughs> he what provides hoagies yeah, and what, sandwiches. What, what is he cooking after the game? <laughs> what, or, 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 or is it a little bit more risque than that? What is he providing him? Tom Rinaldi. What, has he got weed for everybody <laughs> after the game? What's he got? That's my favorite sideline report of the year. <laughs> That's Dom who provides security and, and so, so much else. else. I mean, it's when Greenlaw reached out toward Dom, who provides security and so much else. T- Jalen Carter was upset during the game. He goes to Dom for a hug. He provided him with a snuggie. With so much else. Yeah. Actually, you want to know what I take from that? You want to know, where do these sideline reporters get their info? Apparently, it's Dom. Yeah. Oh, that's Dom. He provides security and so much else. Hey, Tom. This is Dom. Yeah. Tell him I provide so much else. If they if I happen to come into the broadcast, hey, tell Tom. him that I provide security hey. and so much else. I'm Dom. Hey Tom. I got thrown out. Hey Dom, this is Tom. Who's in the blue tent? And what's going on? Are they throwing up? Or are you going to clear them? He's in the protocol, Tom. Yeah. You didn't get that from me. You want to hear from uh you need a hug? You want to hear from Sirianni? <laughs> totally. You want to hear from Sirianni about the Dre Greenlaw thing? Talk to me. By the way, shout out Guy Haberman who threw it out there on Twitter with the slow-mo, lip-reading Twitter video of the day where Sirianni goes to the refs and begs them to throw Dre Greenlaw out of the game. No, he demanded it. 57 needs to be thrown out. That is the word-for-word clip, lip-read of Nick Sirianni, who then after the game said this about uh, Dom and, and so much else. Just saying that we, you know, just knowing we had to move on and, and play the next and play the next play, you know, and that's all we were trying to do in that scenario is move on, getting the ball down and inside the ten or the twelve yard line or something after the uh, after the personal foul, and just regrouping and get everybody going and uh, and play the next play, just like we do when we have a, a bad play, a good play, bad game, good game. We're gonna have to pick ourselves up off the mat, just this week going into this week as well. Well, that's a big nothing burger of an answer. And boy, he seems so much more demure after losing by 23. Certainly more demure than he was before the game when he was at midfield screaming at everybody like he seems to do whenever there's a big game. He got the sure kicked out of him. Uh And he's not so sure anymore. Yeah, He was cocksure. And uh, if you take the sure out of cocksure, which is a word for cocky, (laughs) Then you wind up with the chicken, and now we're going to El Pollo Loco all of a sudden. But I digest. Careful. Yeah, I was very careful, careful there, Randy. I'm glad you I showed take the sure out restraint. of restraint. You did, because you said we would take the sure out of cocksure, which is not what all of us thought you were going to do. Exactly. We thought you were going to say if you take the sure out of, and then. And I didn't. Then it's a personal foul. You know, you get to be my age, Grandy, and, and maybe maturity strikes you a little bit late, but I'm trying to get there. I'm trying to be better about these things. Yeah, I've never noticed that with you ever before. <laughs> my baby girl's almost old enough to listen to this program hey, now. Christy, Christy, we had the most mature moment from Dibs today on the show. I've never had that conversation with her afterwards. And I'm not surprised. Um, yeah, right. and I don't, that sound bite, you didn't actually do what you said that you had to do, and you didn't exactly... Move on. What you did is you went to the referee and said 57's got to go. You didn't immediately go to your play sheet and figure out how you were going to get in from the uh, the 12-yard line. So I'm not buying that explanation, um, Nick. Did, uh, did fatigue play a role in the game, Mr. Sirianni? 
No, no. Uh, again, they, they were, everyone at this time of year is going to be tired and, and all those different things. I'm never, I'm, we're, we're, we won't use that as an excuse. I know we played a lot of, a lot of snaps, but, uh, yeah, we, we just, again, didn't coach well enough, didn't play well enough today. Yeah, I, that one, it's a trap. I, I mean, <laughs> can you imagine if Sirianni had come out after this game with all of their bluster? If they had come out and been like, well, <laughs> played a lot of football lately. Yeah. I know it's week 13, and – Everybody's played 12 games, but, boy, we've played a lot of football lately. I mean, come on. Yeah, so, Jalen um, didn't get a good night's sleep last night. He yeah. was pretty fatigued. And, uh, yeah, you know, we were all tuckered out. I think that's the, ex- the actual expression. We were tuckered out. Tuckered out. Too poop to pop. <laughs> um, what about seeing the Niners again later? They got after us good today. A lot of credit uh, to them. They're they're a really good football team. We didn't play our, our best game, and they, and uh, and they're really good. You can't you can't play that way against the and, and coach that way against a, a really good team. You know we're going to take this one one day at a time. I, I heard a, a lot of guys back and forth. You know talking about you know play play it again. It's going to pro- happen again. But there's so much football to be played between now and then. There's so many other good teams also. So. You know that can't be on our thought thought process. What's going to have to happen tomorrow is we're going to have to get the corrections of what we made mistakes on, and then go through our process. Anybody we play in the NFC, we're going to make sure that we go through our process to say what happened, and then you know, kind of our game evaluation is if we play them again. Here are the things that we need to to do better. Here are the things that we may not have expected that they did. Here are some things that they did well that you can anticipate repeating. So you're gonna we're going to go through that process and if it happens it happens but we're, we're focused on the next game again hats off to them I know, I, I, sorry I know that that's uh, that's how every coach and that's how every professional talks which is let's give credit to the others yep but also we were not at our best and we're gonna go make the corrections here's what I see with the Philadelphia Eagles I said it all day on Friday and told you I am willing to be wrong and I still am even though so far I'm not. I'm very, very not wrong so far. But as we also said last week, well, thank you. But as we also said last week, nothing is won or lost in this particular game. And that's true. Nobody nobody celebrates anything. No parade has, has been scheduled. But when I look at the Eagles, I do not see a team that can go make corrections. I see a team that has a major flaw. And it's going to get them. It's going to get them. And it was shocking to me, quite frankly, that it hadn't gotten them until yesterday. The flaw is very, very simple. The seven defensive players that play behind their front are just ineffective right now. I don't know what the reason is. Some of them are good players that just aren't playing very well. Some of them maybe are lesser than. Maybe injuries are playing a part. But... There have been too many quarterbacks that do whatever the hell they want, whenever the hell they want it against the Eagles all year long. It's shocking to me that they beat the Bills after watching that game. It was mildly shocking to me that they beat the Chiefs, even though the Chiefs have not been as dynamic as some of these other teams. Uh, It will be mildly surprising to me if the Cowboys don't hang 30-plus coming up this weekend. We'll see if that's enough for them to win. But this is a major flaw that, in my opinion, will not allow them to advance through the playoffs. You will be facing very good quarterbacks and very good offenses on the other side. And so far this year, those people have torched you. And that's not something you can fix. Usually not, although they did uh, get an acquisition today, bringing in uh, Shaq Leonard. Yep. So you're, they're trying to do what they can to improve their personnel. If your front plays well enough, you can mask some of those problems for a time, and they did last night, or yesterday afternoon, rather, in the first two drives, their front was nasty, and they forced the Niners to have back-to-back three and outs, but the Niners made the adjustment, and they started to use some misdirection. They got the running game going, which led into the play action. Kyle was able to, to scheme up some winning plays. You marched down, you scored, you took the lead, you put the Eagles on their heels, and the game never turned back in the other direction. But with your front being as good as it is, you can come in and, and wreck shop, and oh, you sure. can change many games. You can win games. Their weakness is it's not scheme, it's not fatigue, it is personnel. And unless those guys play better, which you can play better, 
in the secondary. We had Him. questions about the Niners' defense for three straight weeks. And well, it was we all thought that was it because the coordinator was in the box or was it the team was getting tired? What was the reason for them not playing great? Was it Nick Bosa holding out a training camp? Was it they needed Chase Young and they finally got him and now it's different? So players can play badly and then improve. I do think that what you're saying is true, though. Their deficiencies feel more of a roster structure than anything else. Well, I I mean, it's a huge game for them this week because we've seen Paper Tigers make it to the Super Bowl before just by virtue of getting home field advantage. The bottom line is the Eagles have had a bunch of games go their way that I don't really think should have gone their way, but they did. And they get credit for that, and they count in the standings, and at this hour they remain the one seed. And if they beat the Cowboys this week and maneuver their way through their very soft end of the schedule, then they've earned it. You know, if they go 15-2, and two, they've earned it. And could that home field be enough to end up in the Super Bowl, even though they are not the best team in the NFC, in my opinion? Sure. It's absolutely on the table. Uh, but that's why I would argue of any team this year needing a game for their goal, the Eagles need Sunday's game. In Dallas, because if the Eagles end up a wild card or have to go on the road, I'm sorry. I just don't see it. I just don't see it. I don't even know if they would beat if that if they get the one seed and play Dallas in round two in the playoffs. I don't even know that they would get out of that Uh, because Dak is they'll torch them. They'll absolutely torch them. So, yeah, but Dallas has not shown the same ability that the Niners showed to stop Jalen Hurts. And that's true. where that's true. That's where yesterday's game ultimately turned as they held the Eagles out of the end zone twice early, six nothing game. And after that, the Niner defense found a way to contain Hurts, take away his primary weapons. And remember, Philly didn't have their third best weapon, Dallas Goddard, who was out of the game. The Niners stacked the run. Dallas hasn't shown that ability. Dallas's defense that we all thought it was the Niners, it was Dallas, it was Philly and Cleveland. The top four defenses, bar none. Well, Philly's D has back end problems, and Cleveland's got Miles Garrett playing with one arm, and Dallas's D had a hard time stopping anybody the other I, night. I think Dallas's D, and I, I remember saying this early D- Dallas's D has made their name by playing horrific offenses. They look really good when they play Tommy DeVito. Okay, they, they they do, but they like th- look at their sketch. Josh Dobbs ran up and down the field on him uh, on them when, when he was with the Cardinals. So Dallas D is fine. They are not in the class of the 49ers. You're listening to 95.7 The Game, KGMZ FM, and HD1 San Francisco. Always live in the free Odyssey app, Twitch, and YouTube. All right, let's keep going with you, Nick in Muir Beach on Willard and Dibs. Hi, Nick. What's up, gentlemen? It's a beautiful victory Monday. Wanted to say hello. I'm going to try to do my best. There's so much to talk about. Keep it concise and coherent, but I may need some liberty. Okay. Um, I brought. I said it before the game. It's The offense is going to score points. It's going to be on our defense. And in the first quarter, defense held them out of the end zone for two drives. Offense couldn't get a positive yard. Got to give a lot of credit to the mad scientist, Mr. Kyle on the sideline changing up everything, and basically just went to the house from there on out. And, Willard, you're right. They still haven't won a close game. Is this going to come back to us? I don't know. There could be a couple more not-so-close games. But we're riding right now. And if you want to... you want to put some money on Vegas, dude, I'm heading to the bank right now. We're going to be there in January, slash February. Well, I tell you what, Nick, and I, I remember saying this uh, on Friday. Thanks, Nick. If you want to put money on the Niners or put money on Brock Purdy to win the MVP, do it before Sunday's game. You got to do it before. Now the numbers are totally out of whack. Now the numbers are gone. You're not going to make anything on it now. And they're probably not coming back. Probably not. If the number comes back on the Niners, then that's fine because they could still do what they need to do in January and win the Super Bowl. If the number comes back on Brock Purdy, he's not winning the MVP. The only way that Brock Purdy has his number go up in terms of the odds on him being MVP is if he plays poorly. And if he plays poorly, he's not winning the award. Correct. So that boat you missed. Now, the Niners, in theory, could lose two of their final five and, you know, wind up 
11 and 6, or the, I guess they'd be 12 and 5 at mm-hmm. that point. And you might get a better price on them to be Super Bowl champ, and they still could do that. I don't think that's going to happen. But the Brock Purdy train, if you aren't on it, you missed it. Yep, yep. 100% agree with you on that one. Um, 888-957-9570. Uh, AT&T Carlos. Uh, hey, Carlos and El Cerrito, what's up? Hey, guys. Uh, just calling in, uh, happy about uh, yesterday's win. And I'm always happy to hear you guys because I know that by the time you guys come on, I'm almost on my way home. Oh, good for work. you. You're, you're, you're almost there, Carlos. You're going to get there, Carlos. I'm I know almost, it. I'm um, I want to bring up a point. I don't think Jalen Hurts throws as pretty as Brock Purdy does. Have you guys seen that spiral? And my question is, does anybody throw a most perfect spiral than Brock Purdy in the NFL? Um, I don't know. I mean, a lot of guys throw. Uh, you know what I mean? Aaron Rodgers throws an unbelievable spiral. Carlos, thanks. Um, Brock Purdy's, you know, I, I mean, the guy's a beautiful quarterback. It's a beautiful quarterback. He has been all year. Um, it's taking everybody different amounts of time to get there, and some still aren't there, and that's fine. You're allowed to be impressed by whatever the hell impresses you. But, um, you know, I, listen, I'm not going to take today to to suddenly say Jalen Hurts is not a good player. Jalen Hurts, unbelievable. Jalen Hurts and A.J. Brown are as incredible of a tandem as the NFL has. They are physical beasts. They are achievers. They're unbelievable. They are fantastic. And they were at times effective even yesterday in a day where largely what was going on around them was ineffective. So I still find them fantastic and dangerous and all of those things. Uh, But the Niners had the plan for them. And, um, And where I'm also at when you come to this kind of a matchup, is nothing phases Brock. Like, if you're a Brock fan, this is what you're excited about today. You're not excited that he's the MVP favorite. You're excited that that little dude can go into Philly, not gain one yard in the first quarter, and be down 6 nothing, and shrug and go to the huddle. Right. That's what you're excited about. He's unfazed. You're yes. right. He's unfazed by... What happens around him, he's unfazed by the score, at least what we've seen so far. He goes out there and just executes. He sees what he sees. He gets the ball to where it needs to be. And at the end of the day, when he goes 19-27, to over 300 yards, multiple touchdowns, and you win at Philadelphia, it's a shrug. It's not an overt celebration. And it's, uh, who do we have next? Oh, we got Seattle. Okay. (laughs) Be ready in another week. And that sort of countenance, is going to be really good for him and the team in January, and we've already seen it. Think about last year where you're Mr. Irrelevant, you're thrown out there, and what do you do? You win two playoff games, and then you go on the road in Philadelphia, and you don't really have a chance because your arm gets ripped off, and then you come back this year, and it's like nothing ever happened. Totally. It's really incredible, actually, and I liked hearing him admit that you know he wouldn't do it pregame, but postgame he did, where he was like, yeah, it's on my mind a little bit. A yeah. A bit. You no, know, yeah. How could it not? This is all where it all went down. And he's like, and it was just this year. You know, it was a, it was 11 months ago. It was 10 months ago that this happened. And uh, so, yeah, nice to exercise those demons. Word in Oakland next up. What's up, Word? Give us the word. What's up, fellas? Uh, so, yeah, I got a few things. Um I woke up, well, I've been nervous all week before the game, so thank you, Mark, for uh, being the only person to be like, yeah, I think we're going to win big. I was like, okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, I, but, but, but what the hell do I know? You know what I mean? I mean, I'm no, glad you felt that way. but to hear somebody say it. Yeah. Everybody else was like, I don't know what's going to happen. So once you came on and was like, yeah, I think we're going to win big, I was like, damn it, okay, I can relax. I took that. I took the under, so never mind. Um, I wish that... I, I, <laughs> I wish Bosa didn't divulge that the the scheme and Shanahan didn't divulge that the scheme was to kind of hang back and not rush. I would like everybody to just think that, you know, they kind of hemmed us up at the D line and we couldn't figure it out. And we can do that the next time we play them if we have to, because the Cowboys are just going, you know, they're they're a bunch of mongos from blazing saddles. They just don't see quarterback, go get quarterback. (laughs) And he'll probably tear off 200 against them. Um, Oh, another thing, jerk. 
So if you don't know, we call him in the city. We call uh, Dewan Jennings, Third and Jennings. That's the street in Hunters Point. Got it. Third and Jennings, because every third down, he's money. And that's actually the street, so Third and Jennings is money. Um, and your boy Dom, uh, Dom Bag of Donuts, before, before, right before <laughs> that incident happened, um, he actually, they mentioned he took them to dinner. He took the um, the broadcaster. I yeah. I'm sorry, I don't remember who, who did For the Carl game. For Carl Nelson. He took and- them to dinner. So when your boy said, yeah, he does security, among other things, yeah, he'll take you to dinner, you know, you, you know, get you some grub and whatnot. So, yeah, Don got, a, you know, he, Don got action in the city. Yeah, he does. Yeah, he yeah, does. You can, that, word, that was a hell of a call. Um, that's I, I learned all kinds of stuff there. So, yeah, Third and Jennings and Dom's taking people to dinner. That's why um, those sideline reporters know who he is. And he knows what he's doing. He no dummy. He no dummy. Those people know how to do PR. You get the people who are talking on your side, that's going to shape the narrative. Because if Tom Rinaldi wasn't there and and Kevin Burkhart and Greg aren't talking about Dom, like we would have named him some guy. There's some guy on the sideline that just pushed Dre Greenlaw. What the hell's going on out here? (laughs) They're like, no, that's Dom. That's Dom. Don't worry. He bought me a steak medium rare last night, so everything's okay. All right. I mean, what a weird situation. Yeah, it's weird, and it's made more weird by the fact that he, Dom, felt like he had to inject himself into the proceedings because in that moment, there was no need for security. The security in that moment are the referees, and they provided the security in the moment by throwing the flag. So Dre Greenlaw body slams him. The flag immediately goes up. It's not like Drake Greenlaw was an, an imminent and impeding threat to anybody. He committed the penalty, and he basically just stood there. And out come all the Eagle personnel, sure. including Big Dom. <laughs> Big Dom's got to get out there <laughs> and make sure that he exerts his will on the moment because Drake Greenlaw was somehow a threat to any other human being on Earth. That's where I think that Philadelphia got off easy because Big Dom had no business being out there. Well, of course. I mean, football fights are usually pretty funny anyway. These guys are so protected with all of their gear. What is it you're going to do? What are you going to do, punch someone? You had a better chance of coming away with a broken hand than somebody even noticing. Like, it does. you know what I mean? The only way you can really have a football fight is to do what Aaron Donald did in that Rams-Bengals practice. You start swinging a helmet around, yeah. now people have got problems. Other than that... Football fights are largely humongous people getting in each other's faces. There's pushing, there's shoving, there's yelling, and then everybody goes their separate ways. But, you know, we said it earlier. Like, how does a football sideline need you, Dom, getting in with Dre Greenlaw? There are 40 or 50 other huge men geared up like robots standing right there, and it's actually their fight. Like, I think all the football players actually had a little bit of a thing about this because it's like, dude, this is, this is our battle. We are, we are like, we're warriors. Right. And don't come in here and try to be a warrior when you're a dude with an earpiece. You're not one of us. He had a walkie talkie too. (laughs) Very intimidating. Yeah. Big time. Big dumb. Big Dom, Big Dom Dom Telecom. Sit down, order a pizza, and do your job.